is a hugely busy weekend at Dublin Airport. So how will the DAA and the airlines cope with security and baggage? I'm joined on the line by Air and Travel Magazine editor Owen Curry. Owen, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Just how busy is this weekend compared to maybe a weekend in July? Well, it's already started. We have 268 flights landing, about 47,000 uh, passengers arriving in the airport. So that would compare with just over 300, 320, 330 when it comes to July. The big thing is it's a test of systems which haven't been really tested uh, since Christmas and to how ready Dublin Airport is for the uh, the more the larger numbers that are on their way uh, at the end of May and June. Now, uh, the, the problems we had before were about people trying to get out of Dublin and the security queues just to get into the departure hall. Um, it's different with their arrivals, I presume. You're talking about security checks by the guard uh, when you arrive with your passport. That's where the delays might be. Uh, and one presumes, if international travel has settled down, that your bags should arrive on the carousels. Your bags should arrive. There there have been uh, problems in the past with immigration. Um, there You've got to have a lot of Americans coming through. The non-EU lines can sort of run uh, very long. We've had, uh, it's a big test of those systems as well. You see, every single bit of the airport uh, started going wrong when security queues started going wrong very spectacularly almost a year ago. End of March was the first meltdown. There was another one at the end of May. But what Dublin Airport were doing was transferring staff out not to do security, but to monitor queues. So all the other little bits and pieces, the services, the toilets, every, there was a lot of complaints. Social media was full of it. And of course, bags went missing in large numbers. That was largely down to transfer traffic. It was largely down to one of the two handling agents uh, in Dublin Airport. Everybody in Dublin Airport is saying we're over that hump. We're going to be we're going to get make things better for the customer this year. And they're doing things like decluttering the terminal, putting in extra seats, 400 extra seats. And almost Kenny Jacobs gave a, a press conference with Eddie Wilson of Ryanair a few days ago, almost gave a guarantee everybody would be going through in less than 20 minutes in security queues. All that remains to be seen whether it happens. Now, they claim they have a, a very active recruitment program and therefore uh, they won't be short-staffed. Do we know how well that's going? It seems to be going well. They're up to um, close to uh, say, uh, about 600 staff. They are look They say that they want to recruit 1,000. There's a little bit of a spat with the aviation regulator who says 750 will be enough for Dublin Airport. There's another development that is that it's easier. There was uh, when Terminal 2 opened, there were separate contracts. So it was very difficult to transfer security staff between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. What they'll be doing is watching the lanes, what lanes are open and being able to respond to um, you know, a big rush will come in Terminal 2 early in the mor morning for certain flights. Uh, the rushes will be different in Terminal 1. So they'll be able to transfer security personnel between the two. The other thing that will, won't happen this year that did happen last year was a big issue with security clearances, uh, getting them through in time, getting through the bureaucracy. The regulations change in January of 2022. Uh, they've been in place for a little while now. So all of that business of getting people cleared to go uh, airside, because it is a big security uh, mm. drama to go to get staff cleared to go airside, all of that won't be as big a problem. Now, Kenny Jacobs and his uh, management are telling people, don't come too early because you'll only clog up the system. So the rules are, if you're going to walk on with your bag and you're going to Europe, for example, don't come earlier than two hours. On the other hand, if you have a bag, come a bit earlier than that. Uh, generally, three hours long haul, two hours short haul. Don't come any earlier. Uh, one of the things that they, I'm not sure they're going to implement, but uh, one of the things that they have been considering is if your boarding pass is too far in advance, it won't scan to get you through the gates before listeners will be familiar. You put your mm. your uh, phone or your boarding pass on a scanner. It opens a gate and you're into the security queue. Um, if you come too early this summer, it's unlikely that uh, it'll let you in if you're for more than four hours in advance. Now, long haul is a different game in Terminal 2, but they're really insistent that a lot of the 
overcrowding and the, the, the overcrowding was quite uh, shocking Pat uh, you know particularly when flights backed up because of French air traffic control strikes or something down at the 100 gates where Ryanair fly from there was a lot of gate changes you know 112 to 114 uh, short notice people you know not not arriving at the gate in time very very overcrowded almost dangerously overcrowded that's one of the things they're going to try and avoid this yeah. summer and and uh, finally, you mentioned the regulator decides how many people are appropriate for the DAA to employ. That seems a bit odd. Well, it's it's in a roundabout way. Uh, the regulator decides what the charges are. It looks at everything that the DA spends. The regulator is there to stop a sort of a runaway spend, you know, by an, an airport building marble halls and then charging passengers exorbitant amounts for it. But um, it's quite a standoff if too strong a word but there's quite a debate going on and um, it's about eight euro seventy per passenger is what dublin airport are allowed to charge they want to get that up uh, to more than 10 and they're saying that the level of services could suffer and one of the things that uh, they'll be under pressure from a security queues they also get fined by the way they used to get fined and um, if the security queue is longer than 30 minutes yeah. so they're saying uh, we got to get staffed up to prevent that happening all right, Owen Corrie, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Always a pleasure, Thank you Pat. very much uh, for joining.